Hey guys, this is James. And this is Denny for TDB, bringing you guys episode 100. <laughs> T-Gods! Wah! Yep. So, it's been almost two years. I know, dude. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Our T muscles have grown exponentially. <laughs> Which means, are we on T steroids at this point? Uh, we don't do that shit, man. Yeah. All natural. All natural. Cool. So. What are we? What are we drinking? This I is uh, a roasted oolong. It's called. It's an organic GABA oolong from um, Garden Tea, I believe. Yeah, Grand Tea. Grand Tea. Excuse me. Garden Tea. I have little packaging in here. This is super delicious. So, but we're not going to focus too much on the tea itself. We're going to do some Q and A. And um, you want to start us off, James? Sure. Yeah. So you guys kindly sent us in a whole lot of questions. So my apologies for the questions that we don't get to, um, but here are some of them. Um, so I guess we'll start out with some of the more general questions, mm -hmm. and so this is from Kevin on Twitter, um, and his question is, what was your gateway into tea? One of your first times. Well, my gateway into tea uh, is probably similar to Denny's, but my gateway into tea was more or less Denny. Um, Denny bought a bunch of tea for the office, nice. and I was like, what the fuck is all this shit? Um, I guess we're swearing on episode one. <laughs> yeah, we Cross are. Bridge already. <laughs> yeah, we um, are. I was like, what is all this stuff? The company is going to go bankrupt. Oh my goodness. I better drink it. Just so I can figure out what's so great about this. Yep. And here we are. Uh, lots of money later. Um, several years later as yeah. well. And, uh, and so that was my gateway into tea. What about yourself? Mine was, was pretty straightforward. My mom would go and take me to... Um, take me along with her on this errand. She would run and go to this place called the Teacup in Queen Anne in Seattle that no longer exists. Um, although, what's it now? What's the... Brett. Yeah, Brett, but what's it, What's the place um, in Phoenix? Phoenix Tea yeah. in uh, Burien, for those of you that are in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, so anyway, so um, I would go and, and kind of be uh, perplexed and uh, surprised by the fact that tea is actually a loose leaf thing and all this stuff and different smells and all this crazy stuff. And I just started drinking it in repl as sort of my mom would drink coffee, like, ooh, this is so cool, I'm getting caffeinated and putting way too much sugar in it, all this stuff. And so I did that growing up and then got more and more into it went by virtue of just us visiting the Chinatown International District in Seattle on Fridays for work. And I would just kind of hang out. And uh, this one tea shop, this one lady, Lydia, just kept on kind of beckoning me in over and over and over again. <laughs> just slowly start to lose all my money to her. Then I decided that we should, the company should be buying this stuff. And uh, it's been that crazy road ever since. Yeah. So without without a company credit card, who knows where we would be. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. Mm. Hmm. It's kind of got that corn sweetness to it. Yeah. That's really light. Mm -hmm. uh, let's keep on talking, though. All right. Let me do the next question. All right. Um, this mm -hmm. one is from Nicole from... Well, you can choose if you want. I was going to do that one. But. Yeah. So, Nicole um, from Tea For Me, Please, we did a podcast with, uh, asks, what has surprised you the most since starting TDB? James? I don't know. I guess for me, it's just... I don't know if it, anything has really surprised me, but it's just been how easy it is to do. It's like um, it hasn't really become a chore or anything like yeah. that. It's just something to kind of look forward to. It's not like a huge high of the week or anything like that, but it's fun, and it's fun to interact with different tea people on the Internet. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a, pri a huge surprise necessarily, but it's been a nice thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised at how receptive folks are. Um, and I'm surprised at the reception and also just kind of like how passionate this community is, um, and invested mm -hmm. and like attentive. It's not kind of just like a, I feel like if you're a tea drinker, you kind of become a tea drinker for a while. It's not like you just take up drumming for a year. Um, yeah. So, but. Or, or marijuana for five years. Yeah. So, but, um, <laughs> I, I would say I haven't also haven't had, I mean, surprises, you know, I think 
maybe like you just said, keeping it so casual has been a surprise in itself because it's actually been we've been able to make it easy and low key and fun. So yeah. yeah. All right. So here's another one. This one's a little bit more detailed. Okay. Um, so. So this is from Charlie, who sent us an email, who sent us a few questions. His question is, when I first started drinking tea, I received a lot of criticism from people who said that tea isn't a manly drink. Have you guys had to deal with any criticism through your experiences? <laughs> oh, you first. Uh, yeah, there's definitely some stereotypes and stigmatisms in the uh, Western world. There are Definitely been a lot of people that have been like, huh, oh, you, you don't seem like a tea person, huh? It's getting really good. Mm, it's getting better? Yeah. All right. Um, you don't seem like a tea person, though. Yeah, kind of oriental beauty-ish on this exactly. tea. Um, and, uh, and I think the, thinking back, they're probably putting me sort of in the scones and, <laughs> and big tea and dump the, the, the packets of sugar from McDonald's into it. Um category uh because i don't know i've never seen what's not manly about it or i mean it's a fairly gender neutral thing in in my opinion yeah i think the idea that men have t that men can develop ta fine tastes for things can come off it, it has had a stereotype of whatever which is absolutely ridiculous and has been up and down throughout generations i'm sure depending on your social circumstance and class i'm sure having a fine taste for wine was probably an important thing is a king. So, um, <laughs> so who cares? I've, I, I've never, some people think that it's kind of quirky and weird. I think cause I'm kind of a taller dude, um, and a little bit of a heavier guy. Uh, it kind of seems strange too. People are like, Oh, you have a tea podcast. That's huh, really, um, and whatever. I just like my yeah. taste. Sure. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't I don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. Don't live into the hype, yo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Give me next question. Next question. All right. Um, I'm going to skip that one for a second because uh, that's a funny one. But out of, okay, you'll get to this one. Out of all of the times that you have traveled throughout your tea experiences, what would each of you say is the most interesting place you have been and what was the most interesting tea you had at that location? Okay, well, traveling for tea is not... I have yet to do that. Yeah, I don't think either of us really has. Right. I have maybe a little bit, but... So, I couldn't speak directly to that. Hmm. Um, how about how about this? What has been the most experience associated with tea that you've had while well, just, like, traveling? Like, consuming tea and... I'd say... Hmm. The most similar experience that I've had would probably be drinking yerba mate in a park hmm. with um, with people uh, and sharing the mate. Mate is kind of a casual; it's more casual drink, and you can people like bring it. It's <clears throat> I was in Argentina. You kind of bring it to the park and hang out with your buddies and um, just pass this mate gourd around, and it's super intense, so you don't drink that much at once. You all just get super caffeinated and like, blah. This is a very communal caffeination. Exactly. You all share one glass, one kind of okay. mate gourd, and it's much more of a community experience that way. So, I'd say probably that. I had a really great time going to Salmadovar, Sal yeah, Salmadovar uh, Tea House in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. It was a cool place. Um, and they had some good tea. So, it was really expensive, but it was good. Um, how about you? Yeah, so I guess for me, I was th had a chance to think about the question while Denny was answering. Um, I don't know. Oh, so I've been to Korea a couple times, and I've been to India once. In India, I wouldn't say that I really hunted for tea uh, necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was in Korea, I was like, all right, all right, there's some tea culture here. It's obviously not China or anything like that. So I kind of set out to like find some tea houses. So there's a couple threads on the forum tea chat, and I was just... I was like slowly sounding out all the words for all the tea house huh. because Korea is actually a phonetic language, trying to figure out which one is the one people are talking about, going down all these crazy back alleys. So it was mainly, uh, it was mainly more of the experience of hunting it rather than like actually 
getting amazing tea or anything like that. Eventually, I found a pretty good tea shop called Dongchon, um, which uh, I think I talked about probably over a year ago. Um, Morning Crane Tea sells their teas, uh, which is pretty good Korean green tea. Yeah. But it was more of the experience of just like searching and hunting through a foreign country and looking like an idiot, walking around back alleys and stuff. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and you know, I think that's, that is such a cool experience to have. I mean, that's one of the coolest parts about travel. So I, I love that you did that. You also went to Flushing, right? Did you manage to find any cool places for tea there? You know, I wasn't really hunting for tea oh, in Flushing. Okay. Uh, I did run into my fair amount of Asians. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, <laughs> and there was a, I, I did realize that there was actually Fong's Gourmet right near me, but I have been hopelessly over my tea budget for ages, so I chose not to uh, really partake. I did go to a tea shop, which is in uh, lower Manhattan, uh, Soho, NoHo area. It's good. Yeah, I'd recommend it. Cool. Yeah. So let's cut there, and we're going to transition, and uh, we'll, we'll blend into the next section. Welcome to episode 100, part two. Boom! What's up? I'm Denny. And I'm James. We're going to talk a little bit more about tea, a little bit more about ourselves, a little bit more about TDB. We're going to enjoy some wooey. Yes. And we are going to compare it with this. This stuff right here is iced wooey tea that I have personally carbonated because I am a badass. And so we are going to give it a taste test and see the difference. Um, and so what's the process of carbonating the tea? So you prepare it, uh, you cold brew it in, yes. like in the fridge? I cold brew it, so no hot water. I actually, what I do do, um, uh, with, with certain teas, um, certain teas, <laughs> is I will rinse it with some hot water. Um, oh man, it smells so good. This one's super, like, chocolatey. Mm, like roasted, nutty, yum. Uh, it's very much fruit. Anyways, and then I cold brew it in a big pitcher for up to two days. I find that actually two days is a great time, and one day can be a little bit, um, a little bit lacking. Is it possible to overbrew it? Like if you go for too long, like if you go for a week, will it become bitter? It will get, get kind of like, um, it won't get bitter. It can sometimes get kind of weak, gross. With the, just the leaves kind of start to get a little bit slimy. So mm. That sounds kind of weird. But so like, it kind of just goes just, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Like, there's enough stuff on the leaves growing that if you left it in the month, it would be like a molded, nasty mess. Um, anyway, a week is solid. Um, you can still drink it just fine. It won't be gross. Um, I think two days, three days is great, even a day. Um, and if you want to do sun tea which would just be leaving it outside, then it would be faster. Um, so you go ahead and do that. And then the, the next process is that you assemble a carbonation system. And so I did so. And I probably will do an in-between episode about that, because it's kind of fun. Um, and then... Bam! Bam! Carbonates. <laughs> Force those air bubbles in there. Hmm. So let's drink this Yeah. and compare. Cheers. Cheers. So, definitely a bit chocolatey, bitter, into sweetness. It's got a really nice, soft bitterness on the tip of my tongue, kind of a cacao. Mm -hmm. This is still light. Um, yeah, I love the chocolatey, nutty, Nutella. Very wooey. Like, totally. Like, very uh, yeah, very characteristic of wooey, I would say. Yeah. And this will all be thickened up a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is nice, though. So. This actually... Is not as fruity as the um, wooey that I've been using to. What wooey have you been using? I've just been using the super cheap Shaguan, um, or not Shaguan, the, the. Is it from the, Scott? Yeah, the Yunnan sourcing. The Shui Xian? Shui Xian. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, so that um, one's pretty roasty too. Yeah, it is. And actually, but it, it really. I find that icing it ends up making it far less. Makes it, there's no stringency whatsoever, and um, the, the flavors can be a little bit more gentle. So, Interesting. Yeah, I would, I would suggest that some folks out there, if you have a, a bunch of tea that you got, 
give it an ice and see what it tastes like. It probably will taste a little different. Yeah, and it's starting to get warmer and warmer, so uh, time to have some iced tea. Mm, I love that little, I don't know if it's a stringency or tannin, little bit of mouth pucker um, that accompanies this. Yeah. It's a nice little texture. So while we're drinking this, I'm going to find some more questions. Cool. And, uh, yeah. What's your favorite color, James? Uh, blue. Well, I should have loaded these before. All right. I have some questions. Great. Okay. We are just going to go from the top. Cool. Uh, I am a novice poor drinker. In fact, most of my knowledge can came from watching 99 episodes of TDV. Good choice. Awesome. I am on my second ripe Yunnan sourcing cake, and I have been struggling on the best ways to store poor cake. I store most of my tea now in tins, so my first thought is to just break up the cake and put it in a tin. What do you recommend? And the secondary question is, when will Scott from the U.S. Yunnan Sourcing... Scott from Yunnan Sourcing be a guest on the show or possibly a field trip to the U.S. Yunnan Sourcing location from PDE442, who sent us an, an email. Thanks, sir. Um, to answer the second part first, <clears throat> I don't know, but I think it'd be really fun to collaborate with Scott in some way or another. Um, I know that we have talked about uh, ways in which we could... Um, take TDB abroad, and I think Scott would be a great, uh, a great compliment to that. So, but that being said, we don't have any plans today, um, but the more encouragement, the better, and awesome. Yep. So I'm going to, I'm going to quickly weigh in with my thoughts about the pure storage and then hand over the gauntlet to James because James is a pure god. Um, I personally end up depending, okay, so the first part is Depends. Depends on how fast you're going to drink it. If you only have one cake and you're drinking through this cake in two months, it doesn't really matter how you store it. I mean, don't keep it out in the rain. <laughs> don't keep it in your oven um, when it's on. Uh, but you're probably going to drink through the cake so quickly that it's not going to really have an influence. Um, that being said, uh, for me, I don't do anything special. Um, so I don't store it in the fridge. I don't store it... Um, in a ultra humid area, Seattle tends to have pretty high relative humidity, and so it does pretty well overall. Uh, I store it in the uh, paper that it comes in, in the packaging that it comes in, uh, and that's about it. Yeah, and you know, Denny gave I think really good advice for um, sort of casual poor drinkers that aren't necessarily looking to age poor, but more just like make sure their tea doesn't taste terrible uh, when they have it. And uh, so, I mean. If you were to keep, I would definitely keep it in its original packaging, unless it's tearing or anything like that. That will keep, like, the sunlight and just prevent a lot of just terrible things from happening to it. Uh, you could put it from the original cake into a Ziploc, and that would just help to maintain it, uh, prevent it from going worse. Uh, most of the places in the U.S. and Europe tend to be much drier than any place in Asia. Hmm. Not everywhere. Uh, that's a big generalization to make. Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest risk that people here run is for their cakes to dry out, especially in the wintertime and stuff. Um, and uh, that's one way to make it nasty. The other way is to go completely the other way and get it all moldy and stuff. But for the most part, if you keep it in a Ziploc or something like that for the more casual, poor drinkers, that's what I would probably recommend. And one final tip is just that it will, especially over a longer period of time, incorporate the flavors that are present around X. So don't keep it in your spicy spices cabinet. Definitely. Um, but that's, you know, besides that. Unless you're trying to sense. experiment or something. Yeah. 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 Let's give this a shot. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. It's much lighter. Yep. It's got that fizzy... Um, CO2, like, bite to it. It's almost like a flavor. It's almost like a texture. It's hard to describe. Yep. That's um, the most immediately obvious yeah. thing. Um, it's light. We actually had a cup of this before we started filming this, and 
I would say the wooiness of it came out a lot more. In contrast to an actual wooey brewed hot and got gong fu style, it's right. a, it comes out. Uh, you can de- definitely taste the carbonation and stuff like that. It's more emphasized, at least. Um, yeah. But uh, there definitely is wooey in there. I think it's a little bit more fruity. I think it's got a little bit less of that chocolate experience, but still has it a little definitely, bit. Definitely, yeah. And it's a little minerally, too, although it's easy to, to kind of conflate the CO2 um, taste, ultimately, with that mineraliness. Um, so, interestingly enough, this is probably one of the subtlest of flavors that you would produce if you were going to carbonate. Uh, an iced tea, and I will be experimenting with other ones and report back. But let's keep drinking the hot tea. I'm enjoying that. Yeah. Um, okay. Next question. All right. Let me let's ask see. You. We have time for I think one more before the next part. All right. Um. Let's. Quick one from Tim. What do you guys do to uh, with tea leaves that have been steeped two or three times? It has been my experience. The flavor has uh, been. Greatly reduced by the third or fourth go around. Are you? Yeah, excuse me. Good are you uh, ever <laughs> saved for? Uh, are they ever saved for additional use, or do you leave the leaves from the previous day and re-steep in the morning? Tim, go. That's a good question. Uh, I most of my teas I feel like can steep far more than. Uh, just recording the oh audio, yeah, so that's right. So we're gonna have a <laughs> dynamic <Sorry>. experience. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, most teas that I drink, I can definitely steep them more than three or four times. It, for instance, if it was a black tea, I guess that would go more towards like the three or four times because yes. I'm using less leaf, right. um, and that's probably more akin to your experiences. Um, but if it's a really special tea, uh, I will definitely not toss the leaves out. I will uh, leave them for what I deem to be a reasonable amount of time uh, before returning to them. So that could be anywhere from couple hours to 12 hours or even the next day yeah uh definitely give it a little bit of a sniff especially if it's something like ripe poor um Mm -hmm. mold and stuff like that uh are definitely the enemies yeah um same thing i will often if i feel like eh, i'm kind of done with this session or i want to change things up i'll throw them in a big pitcher and ice it and give it a couple days and it'll um pull a, a bunch of the extra flavor out uh, like with specialty teas that I want to um, really preserve, I will continue to drink it. I also find that walking away from a session, eating something, doing my daily life, and then walking back, I get that heightened sense of the flavors again, that in some sense I can become assimilate not assimilated, but um, accustomed to the flavors within the session, pull back out, and I get that, that eighth or ninth steeping is going to taste stronger three or four hours later. Definitely. Um, and I also want to... Yeah. Just go off that point because I think that brings up a really interesting topic. I think giving the tea a rest and stuff like that, uh, kind of like you were just talking about, is a great way to extend the longevity of a session. I right. think there are certain teas that might go for 12 steeps if you did it all within like 30 minutes, let's say. And if you were to steep that in like three different sessions yeah. and give it some sort of four or five hour break each time, you could probably get it to maybe three or four extra steeps. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. The bitterness is far more emphasized. I like, uh, you were talking earlier about how uh, brewing it cold brew style uh, is absent much of the bitterness. And for me, going from there back to this, I taste those bitter notes just much, much more. I like them. You know, I think they're great. It's like why bitter chocolate tastes good. I, I think this tea tastes good because of the bitterness. So people who are like, ugh, bitterness, you know, I mean, it's and up to your personal preference. Thing of cream and sugar in right, it. if you don't like dark chocolate, don't drink uh, bitter teas. But this one isn't, and I don't want to over um, communicate how bitter this is. It's not that bitter, but um, it's, it's tasty. Yeah. The other sure. final piece I'll say about leaving the, steves, the, the leaves to steep is that if these just left this in the cup, there's enough residual water in here also that it's going to be steeping the tea. And that extra little shot of water, too, will make that next cup two or three hours later a little stronger. Yep, absolutely. That's also a really good point. Anyways, I think we're running out of time for the second part, but we'll see you guys in just a second. What's good, people? This is Denny. And James. Uh, and this is part three. Yes, so... Our Q&A, episode 100. Yep, you're getting three parts. 30 minutes. This is the Lord of the Rings of TDV episodes. Nice. Except, Who's Gollum? Yeah, and who, who are the hobbits? I didn't think this all the way through, apparently. Who has the ring? 
Oh, well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was never that big of a Lord of the Rings so guy McGuffin. myself. I'm yeah. more of a sci-fi weirdo. Um, okay, so next question. Yes. So this one is from David. You guys recommend using a lot of tea to a specified amount of water right. and exceedingly short brewing times. I understand that a lot depends on your method. Gaiwan, Ishing, Western. Good point. But can't I enjoy the tea you guys talk about using less tea, regular Western gear, a nice teapot with a mesh infuser, and a longer steep time? Also, while I realize I, can't get, I can get several steepings from the larger amounts of tea, there's only one of me. From David. I think that's a really good question. I think that's a good question. Yeah, I'll toss it to you. Sure. Um, you know, I think there's... So I'll answer this question in two ways. The first way is to say that tea is a, a beverage to be enjoyed, and you should do whatever you want to do to enjoy it. If that means that you're doing cartwheels while you're sipping your tea, that's great. Um, more power to you, and there should be a video of that. That sounds yeah, awesome. That's good, good for your body, <laughs> yeah, good too. Balance. I think that's probably better good health benefits. It's good health benefits, for sure. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Um, but there, so just, just from a purely physical perspective, um, from a purely mechanical perspective, there is a significant difference between brewing tea Gaiwan style and brewing tea Western style in the strainer. And that's just the, the ability for the tea leaves themselves to disperse in the liquid and have more surface area as a result of water touching the leaves. Not that the leaves won't be exposed to the same amount of surface area, but that the water itself, the surrounding vessel... So, for instance, if it's just if the tea leaves are just clumped up to the very top here, the rest of the water down here is not going to be exposed to it as much. You're going to need to agitate it a lot and so forth. Um, and even with a tea, so for instance, if you were just to use the same example, just we would be gaiwan. I'm sorry, using a gaiwan gongfu style is basically just throwing all the tea leaves in the huge container and straining them at the end, as opposed to straining them inside of the container. So there's no, there's not really much difference, but the actual effect of it in terms of the brewing is going to have a big impact. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally like um, brewing tea uh, gong fu style, but we've had people tell us to brew tea Darjeeling style with a Darjeeling method um, that didn't taste good gong fu style when I did it. So it also depends on the tea. Yeah, for sure. And usually if you want to do sort of the Western style brewing, which is really just longer steep times, less leaves, and uh, less overall steeps, I guess, in, mm -hmm. like, a big cup. We t generally recommend sort of, like, the big steepers that have plenty of room for the leaves to expand and yes. stuff like that, which yeah. which I, I do agree with Denny is quite important for the process. And, again, it's if it's, if it's going to really encumber you and have this big headache of making tea and ruin the whole process, don't do it, obviously. Um, but, yeah, yeah, good, good point. And I love also just throwing tea leaves in a cup and drinking them that way, Grandpa style. So that's another way you can try yep. as well. Also a great way to finish off a session. Totally. Yeah. All right. So you want to ask <laughs> yeah, this yeah, one? Yeah, I love this one. <laughs> uh, from Mike. <clears throat> Here's a totally frivolous question. Mike, I don't think this is frivolous at all. I think this is one of the most important this questions that we've had to deal with. This is important for my day to day practical <laughs> life. Um, uh, wanted something silly for you for your 100th episode. What determines whether James appears with or without glasses? I think it's uh, I think the no glasses look is better for what it's worth, Mike. So, Mike, we appreciate your aesthetic input. Yeah, thank and you. Somewhere out there, uh, probably just a little ways away, my mom is nodding in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's a point of contention amongst my friends and family. Uh, but uh, I wear contacts when I don't. My eyes are completely terrible. So I am always using some sort of corrective eye, corrective eye thingy. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I live in Capitol Hill in Seattle. I just wanted to fit in with all the cool hipsters. It's, <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's so true. I almost wish that I had bad vision so that I could fit in better. Uh, that's not true at all. And I almost wish just get the that glasses. I had tattoos all over my face so that I could fit in here as well. But uh, <laughs> that's also something that I don't actually want. So let me. I'm just going to go ahead and answer, ask some just more get to know James uh, and Denny questions. So um, quickly, James. Um, what's your family situation like in terms of siblings, and do you think that had an impact on your tea experience at all? That's an interesting question. Uh, uh, I have two younger sisters, and I do also have two parents, 
believe it or not. Nice. Um, nice. And I'm half Chinese and half white. Uh, my mom is Chinese, but really, I didn't really grow up with tea or anything like that. We drank it at Asian restaurants, but, I mean, like, drinking tea with food, you don't really taste it the same way that yeah. you would if you had a more concentrated tasting or anything like that. So I would say, for me, it had a fairly uh, minimal impact. Uh, I really didn't start getting into tea until Denny and I started to work together, and uh, kind of like we talked about earlier in this episode, yeah. tea stuff just started to show up at the office. <laughs> What about yourself? Same question. Um, I have. I also coincidentally have two younger sisters. I have a twin sister who's technically younger, and so I get to say that, which is hilarious. Um, it's not actually. I mean, younger. So, but um, we didn't grow up as a family drinking tea. Um, as much, it was kind of more. My mom was into her lap song, shoe song, um, style thing, uh, and I would drink tea occasionally. Now that I'm more into tea. Not much has changed still. My parents still don't drink a lot of tea. My dad loves his enormous Earl Grey from Starbucks, and uh, my mom still drinks the same tea. Um, But uh, my sisters do um, pay attention to it a little bit more when I have them over for tea, and they get to kind of comment on it. Yeah, Um, and I think you guys saw Abby in one of your... Exactly. Yeah. And so Abby is a little bit more of a foodie, um, having had restaurant experience, so she's kind of into food stuff, and so I think that appeals... And actually, coincidentally, we had tea with a friend um, over the weekend, and he was new to tea, but had a lot of the lexicon of food and could could use that to apply to tea. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. And he was picking it up remarkably quickly, yeah. and I think a lot of that had to do with his sort of background as like more of a foodie, someone interested in what goes into food and that kind of thing. Speaking of food, James... Do you like to cook? Do you cook regularly? What kind of stuff do you cook? You know, my favorite book is the, uh, oh man, I'm forgetting it, but it's that one woman that can microwave everything into the perfect meal. It's like <laughs> her her micro- microwave dinners for one. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the microwave Bible or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh like God. No, uh, I haven't heard yeah, of that before. It, it wins <laughs> A lot of like the saddest book around words and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, unexpectedly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like you're a true bachelor award. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know it's interesting uh. that we do these questions back to back. And uh, the guy we had over and had tea with Belmont um, is his online alias. Right. Uh, he kind of had, I guess, a reverse path of what I would have had. Mm. Whereas, like I, I started to get into tea, and I think tea kind of led me to like I've always enjoyed food and stuff right. but I think it kind of took me to a different level as far as like cooking and stuff right. like that is concerned and maybe unsurprisingly to uh, most of the audience there I'm very interested in uh, East Asian cooking and stuff like that so I I, uh, I cook a lot of Korean food despite not having a Korean background I also cook uh, a couple different um, Chinese dishes yeah what about what about you are you are you, uh, after TDB episodes, do you go and get your daily McDonald's and Dick's Burgers, or are you, uh... I do love, I do love a good burger. Yeah, do, I, you, do you enjoy life, is the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've been into cooking, grew up in the kitchen, more or less, um, and I think as a result of wanting to live a healthy lifestyle, cooking became a natural extension of that, and then in part of that, um... I think being somewhat of a foodie and being exposed to, by virtue of my my, um, mom and my, and Abby, my twin sister, uh, exposed to new ingredients and new uh, cuisines and new preparation styles. And it's really opened my eyes up to a lot of the beauty of food, the complexity of food. And I think one of the cool parts about um, learning about different foods is that you learn about the processing, you learn about the whole history of that um, particular food, where it comes from, why it was used for what. Uh, and I think that is really cool, and I think that applies directly to tea, and it can apply directly to yeah. any sort of endeavor you're going to be interested in. So, And, I mean, uh, you've also traveled quite a lot. We have a few more minutes. Cool. C- traveled quite a lot, just, like, uh, to Colombia most recently and right. around and stuff. Do you think, like, that has co- sort of uh, influenced the sort of food and, like, that, that aspects of your life? I, yeah, I, I love being able to go to restaurants and go to kitchens um, and taste local cuisine. So you don't just get the fried rice at all Chinese restaurants? I don't. We try. We we will be hungry for hours to find the perfect um, spot. And they're usually 
usually hard to find, misnamed or labeled, and uh, down a dark alley. It's going to be good. It's always more typos, so better. good. Yeah, if the you more can't flavors. if you can't order in your native tongue, odds are you're at the right place. <laughs> um, and if someone is telling you that you don't want to eat what you're trying to order. You need to order it, and you need to also not be offended. Um, I have a great story from a... Uh, anyway. Um, what was it? It was, like, it wasn't... Fr- it was fr- it was salted pork with beans. That sounds simple restaurant. enough. Yeah. It was delicious. She was like, no, you won't like that. I'm like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it and see. Anyway. Wow. She must have really stereotyped you. <laughs> Weird. Um, She's like, no, fried rice. <laughs> fried rice. <laughs> Uh, what else? What other questions? Hey guys, welcome to part four of episode 100. We had planned on doing three parts, but this camera turns off every 12 minutes, <laughs> so we are, we are back again. Very true. Um, and we're drinking a, a delicious Louis. Yeah. Um, which is, which we haven't even said where it's from. It's from Music City Tea, uh, courtesy of Brian, who, who, uh, supplied a couple of teas for my in-between episodes. Nice, nice. Yeah. Really, really nice, lovely, uh, chocolatey. Um, what other things are people wondering about with TDB? What about, like, the future of TDB? Something we don't even know about. Yeah. Um, (laughs) yeah. Good good question. (laughs) I don't know, you know, I'd love to have some more professional, not professional, but, like, um more of a pro- video project at some point, and yeah. I think that could be lending itself really well to some sort of travel thing, um, where we kind of bring you guys along with, uh, I think that'd be really fun. Um, so let us know in the comments if yeah. you think that's cool, cool. Yeah, or if you have some specific idea, we're always happy to hear excuses why we should travel around and do more TDB. Seriously. Um, and if we should do a Kickstarter to get that funded or what, let us know what you guys would think. Yeah, would let be me smartest. know what you guys would. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you guys don't realize yet how our cameras are set up, we are literally filming this from my apartment, and we are by ourselves alone. After this episode, we're true. probably going to have a crying <laughs> session. There's a there's a, a PA right over there. There's a bunch of donuts over there. We're in LA. And on then the there's stage. my ten imaginary friends over there. And then there's ten ten of Denny's imaginary friends over there. We actually paid someone to take photos of James's apartment and then reconstruct it exactly. This is these are actually just props. Yeah, this is all fake. Actually, this is all. This isn't actually real. This tea. is like a. You guys saw the interview. It's like uh, it's like the fake fake food. <laughs> It's fake everywhere. We're just pretending. We're actually just been drinking water the whole time. <laughs> what are you... What... <laughs> what... Here's a kind of an abstract question, but um, what are you looking forward to most in your further um, experiences with tea, you know? We're, we're past the, the newbie stage, where I maybe call ourselves intermediate tea folk. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe even uh, advanced. Um what, you know, do you see anything, any milestones in the future related to your tea journey that you could predict now? That's an interesting question. For me, at least, uh, I feel like I'm really going heavily into the direction of poor, and I'm, sh- I'm sure you guys have noticed in the in-between episodes and stuff like that. This past year in particular has really shifted a lot of my interest in that direction, and I think it's just one of the most interesting, diverse of uh, categories of tea just because of the whole aging aspect adding just a lot of different possibilities to the Mm -hmm. tea um so i don't know exactly where that's going to lead me but uh you know i'm i'm looking forward to traveling to taiwan or somewhere like that uh hopefully this year and just exploring a little bit more and you know i don't know it's hard to say it's always hard to say with these sorts of things what about for yourself i think the same thing actually so an example would be Um, so the same thing in regards to the traveling. And I think for me, I want to expose myself to the whole process. And there's something really cool about getting that experiential knowledge, um, of how something is produced that changes the sit home, the sitting down at home experience of what it is. So, um, for the first time in my life, I went and, uh, went buck hunting and I shot a buck and this big deer, this huge animal, 
and I, um, I, 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 you know, dismembered it, whatever you want, gutted it is a more crude word for that, and it was a really intense experience, and a really powerful experience, and it really changed how I relate to food, and I think that, hmm. I hope to have a similar experience with tea, where, um, by virtue of living, not living, but traveling to, uh, a country and seeing the tea plants and seeing the process from start to finish more so than just in my apartment with my <laughs> little tea plant, I think will, um, really enrich my, my whole experience of tea. Yeah. So, so, so sort of from like crop all the way to cup cup. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that entirely. And, uh, that and then just you know continuing to appreciate and enjoy and and further gain reference experiences for my little palette of uh, flavors. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you are known for your crazy adjectives and stuff like that, and your, your talented nose. <clears throat> I've just been reading the thesaur- <laughs> the thesaurus day in and day out yeah. to give you guys the best yeah. of the best. Now we're just gonna learn a word. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just as many syllables as possible. Um, yeah. What else? Should we, should we call it there? We probably episode should call 100? it there. It's pretty, it's pretty long. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. long. It's yeah. a brawling episode. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, James. Or should we have, like, five different endings? Just like all <laughs> the <other> rings. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's like an hour and a half. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So, James. If um, the people who have made it this far... <laughs> By the way, you're a total weirdo. Um, but if you have made it this far, what but could we love you? Yeah, yeah. What what could our greatest fans and folks who are just watching this for the first time and have some interest in tea? What could they do to learn a little bit more about tea? Yeah, they, well, they should definitely go check out tdb.org. Um, hit subscribe below uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're, we're releasing lots of videos. This is kind of a special uh, extended edition for uh, for an episode. Um, but we usually just drink through one tea in episode and talk about it, talk about tea, a uh, pretty free-flowing sort of thing. Lots of articles as well. Um, and at this point, we have a whole catalog of content, so if you're interested in any specific type of tea, uh, we generally talk a lot more about the teas on the show. Comment, uh, join the newsletter, subscribe, and until next time, we'll see you guys on episode 101. Yeah. All right. Cheers, guys.